Hey guys, welcome to Surfing Show. I'm Noel Salas, and today's episode is the second in a series we've been working on to pick the right fin template for different surfboard categories. Now this is gonna be a great episode, so get your favorite drink, sit back, and enjoy the show. Now as we dive into the Rocket Wide, this is really about the small wave performance board category. Now in episode one, we focused on the Groveler, and what I'm seeing across the board from a lot of different manufacturers is I feel like they're building a small wave performance board category by a few different things that I see in the attributes. But between the small wave performance board and the Groveler, they kind of hit the same wave sizes, one to three, one to four feet. Now the first thing I wanna look at is the outline of a small wave performance board. It's almost like a high performance shortboard scrunched down so it's shorter, wider, and thicker, but it still has that high performance shortboard outline. And I really find this is for surfers that want that look under their feet, even in the one to three, one to four foot wave size. Now I wanna talk about the foil on a small wave performance board compared to a Graveler. And it's really about how the shaper is distributing the foam in that board. And for me, when I look at a small wave performance board and it's nice and thinned out, even though there's a lot of hidden foam up here for paddling in small waves, it doesn't mess with the swing weight. And swing weight is, if I'm, if I'm riding this board and I'm surfing it, and if it has a lot of foam up front, kind of like a groveler does, I can feel that foam under my feet in my turns. If the board's a little bit on the bigger side, that foam kind of makes the board turn a particular way and I feel like it's front heavy, right? Now, as we move into maybe the back end foil of a small wave performance board, I like that they're nice and tapered, really thinned out so I can sink it really fast and keep this board ultra sensitive compared to a groveler. Now I wanna talk about the width and the length of a small wave performance board compared to a groveler. Let's look at this rocket wide and we'll start with wide point, right? What I like about this one is its wide point is center. Compared to most Grovelers, you're gonna have its wide point front from center, making the board do more of a carve or draw out your turns, right? Now, we have to remember, this board's 5'2", and the Rocket Wide's 5'5". Five five. And the reason I point that out is because when we have the wide point front from center, and I'm writing this board at the appropriate size for my skill level, I don't have to worry about this board catching up front because it has low rocker and it's wide point front from center, they're offsetting that by it being 5'2 for me. But where you might have problems is you could be the same weight and be an intermediate surfer and this could be catching on you in your grovelers. Now, we're looking at the rocket wide with its wide point front um, at dead center and it being 5'5, it's narrower in here, this board's 18 and three quarters as opposed to something that's 20 inches wide. So the wider the board, it gets a little bit stiffer. We're offsetting that by making it shorter. So at 5'5", five, five, 18 and 3 quarters, I'm gonna have that sensitivity and performance, and I'm also gonna have a narrower nose, so I don't have to worry about that as much, that catching up front. And then as we step back in the back end of the board, I talked about the foil being tapered and keeping it ultra sensitive. There's a good amount of surface area in here to give me that extra speed and performance in a small wave performance board compared to maybe the daily driver or high performance shortboard. That's what I'm looking for. And at 18 and three quarters, it's relevant to how wide the board is in the tail and getting the performance that I want, as opposed to a groveler at 20 inches wide where I get that wider tail. It's gonna give me good speed down the line and projection, but I'm gonna lose a little bit of that agility and performance in the pocket, unless I keep it super short at 5'2". Now I wanna talk about the performance I expect out of a small wave performance board versus a daily driver, a high performance short board, or even the likes of a groveler. And what I'm talking about is that one to three foot wave, right? I'm up, I'm surfing. I wanna get the board vertical real quick. I'm looking for this board's agility to do what I'm thinking in that amount of space without any delay. So I hit that first turn, go vertical. Then I hit the second turn. And all along, I'm adding technique to drive through those turns to get me to where I wanna go with doing the most amount of critical maneuvers in the shortest amount of space. And when I take a board that's 5'5", five five, with the right dimensions, it's gonna do what I'm thinking without delay compared to that of 
a daily driver at maybe 5'7 or a high performance shortboard at 5'9. Every time we add length, it's going to give a split delay in all of my turns. Now let's talk about a Graveler. So at 5'2, it's nimble, it's quick. I can get that agility in that small transition, but now I have 20 inches wide compared to 18 and three quarters. So it's going to feel a little bit tighter. And then we get into the tail, which is going to be a little bit wider. That's also going to hurt me in the performance area. And that's why I feel like the small wave performance board category is so important. Now what inspired this series is something new Futures is doing called the Legacy Series. It's three different templates. We have Raked, Neutral, and we have Pivot. Now they're making this in the honeycomb construction, so it's middle of the ride number. It's something they called balanced. It's between a five and six and flex. So it's really about feeling each different template with consistency in your turns. And what makes this set unique is that they all have the same fin area. Now I mentioned three different templates, raked, neutral, and pivot. And what I want to do is I want to define rake from futures perspective. And what they talk about is it's the amount of fin area behind the shaper's dot. So if we're looking at the shaper's dot, if we look at a side fin, we put this fin in here, there's a dot on the board where the fin box is supposed to be placed. Then you put the fin in, and let's just say if, if the trailing edge hits the shaper's dot, they're talking about the, if we drew an imaginary line coming up here, that imaginary line would be the amount of rake is how much fin area is past the, the trailing edge of the fin. And I think a really good way to see how dramatic or drastic this is, I'm gonna put the pivot fin and the rake fin up against each other, try and line it up the best I can. And I'm gonna show you, look how much more fin area is behind the trailing edge on the rake fin compared to the pivot fin, right? It looks like it's about a half inch roughly. And then if we turn the fins this way, you can see the fins a little bit more upright. And I don't know, maybe that's an eighth of an inch. I'm not sure, but it's, it's dramatic and you can see it. Now that we've established what rake is, let's talk about what it felt like in the rocket wide. Now, since the wide point on the rocket wide is in the center and I put a rake fin in there, if I do a turn, like a quick wrap in the pocket with this rake, I'm gonna still be able to do a relatively tight turn because of board design with its wide point in the center, but it's gonna cover more area and make it a little bit more round or a little bit more drawn out. As opposed to if I put a pivot fin in there, what, what, it, what happens for me is I come off the bottom and I'm picking the same lines, but the pivot fin is gonna do that turn a little bit faster and make the arc a little bit tighter. Another thing I like about the pivot fin is that my turns are gonna feel faster and it's gonna help me get vertical quicker too. Now, if I'm surfing a beach break and I wanna get two quick turns in, I'm gonna achieve that easier with a pivot fin compared to the raked fin. Now, I had somebody ask me a question and said, hey, I love my rocket wide, what fins do you recommend? And my response, initial thought was, if you already love it, then you have the fins that are working with it good already. The next thing is, since its wide point is in the middle, what do you wanna work on as a surfer? If you wanna work more on vertical surfing, get the pivot fin. If you wanna work on your rail game and really drive through your turns and gain speed on all your turns, then go with the raked fin. Now, one of the things I love about the neutral fin is it's somewhere in the middle of the raked and the pivot. So it's kind of the best of both. We're gonna get good carves and drive in our turns, and we're also gonna get a quick pivot. Now, the neutral fin also offers the least amount of influence on the board design itself. And what I mean is the shaper had something in mind, puts in all the attributes, you put in a neutral set of fins, and you're gonna get what the shaper had for you to interpret when you write it with a neutral set of fins, as opposed to manipulating this board with a pivot fin to get it vertical, or write it at a beach break to get two turns in a one turn section, or putting a raked fin where you wanna get more drive and draw out your turns a little bit. So let's look at some waves together. This is a rake set of fins. Board's got a lot of drive and speed. It feels really, really good. As we get into this little wave right here, you can see it fits in the small space or area. Board's got good drive through turns. That was a kind of a drawn out wrap right there. On this little left, see, they're not super vertical, but it's in the pocket. 
Now I put a, a set of pivot fins in here. Waves are a little bit bigger, but you can see for me, the turns are a little bit tighter in arc. Right there, do you see how quick that turn was? Right into a reverse. So this is the Sci-Fi, and its wide point's a little back from center. I have a pivot set in. You can see the board's pivoting real quick, small little section, and the turns felt really fast. This one, it just kind of came around real quick on me on that 360. Down the line, speed till there, but you see how the board just so easy for me to turn. Even in the wraps, it feels really good. Now this is the Wilco F13 with a neutral set. Wide points in the center here, and I feel like I'm getting the best of both and really feeling what the board was designed to do. And you can see it right here, watch. It's pivoting quick still, and this is a really quick wrap in a really kind of a mushy section. There's another wrap. So you can see, best of both, good carves. Look, watch the board pivot here, coming out with good speed on every turn. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode on picking the right fin template for your small wave performance boards. To learn more about the Legacy Series, head over to Futures website. They make it in small, medium, and large, and at 160 pounds, I prefer a large for maximum speed in small waves. Well, that's it for today. If you like the show, subscribe. You can also find us at surfandshow.com. Until next time, see you in the water. Bye-bye. Party. Nothing I can say